today amen welcome to the anchor to the cross i am so excited to see you guys here all looking lovely ready to receive it did you come ready to receive it today yes amen to that you know anchor to the cross where is a place where we believe that god you know opens heart and heal and this day is a day that God has an invitation only for our women today. And I believe that God has great things today for us. You know, we made this as a God's groom, God's bride. We are the bride of the church. And I know today we have great word for you guys. And I know we have a speaker today that's here to give us a word today. And we have to prepare our hearts. And I ask you ladies, are we ready to open up our hearts? Are we ready to receive today? When I say that, I want us to take this dedication day to day for the Lord. I want you guys to let go of all what's going on outside of this room. I want you guys to set free all the worries that you guys have today. Today is a day 
that you're going to remarry the Lord. It's a brighter day today. And you know, this day, it wasn't because we set up, the Lord set up the day. Because, you know, when Pastor Charlie said we needed a woman's conference, and he says, just set it up and let God be in control. And God was in control. He made everything happen. We pray for a speaker and it happened really quick. And she's here to give us word today. But I ask you today that you are here. There's no consequence that you are here. You are here because the Lord wants you here today. So I ask you today, bow your heads right now. Let's have a silence and quiet for the Lord. I want you to ask the Lord, inviting Him into your heart right now. Speak to Him, Lord, whatever it is that you have for me today, Lord. That you open my heart today, Lord. You know what I need today, Lord. Today is the day, Lord, that I am going to renew my vows to you, Lord. Lord, I want to cast all those negative thoughts that's in my mind right now, Lord. I rebuke in Jesus' name if there is any jealousy, any procrastinations in this church, Lord. Lord, whatever it is that's here, Lord, I cast in the name of Jesus that you be gone and we clear our minds, Lord, because we are here to praise you, to worship you, and to receive you today, Lord. So touch my shield, my chin, my sisters, Lord. I ask, Lord, that every single lady that's here today, Lord, that you have this touch on their hearts, Lord, that they renew, Lord, their marriage to you, Lord, that they dedicated to you today, Lord. But most of all, Lord, bring your presence, Lord. Bring your fire today, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit pour in all of us today, Lord, because we are here, Lord. We need your touch. We need your healing, Lord. And most of all, Lord, we worship you and we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you feel the presence of the Lord right now, start speaking to Him right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, to this place right now. We thank you that you invited us today to receive you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We worship you. You are everything that we need, Lord. Bring your healing today, Lord. Bring your blessings today, Lord. We are here only for you, Lord. Nothing more, Lord. We are nothing without you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, Lord, that he opened the door for us today to be here, Lord. So I ask him, Lord, that you touch Margie and pastor, Lord, that you bless Almighty, Lord, because they have a great faith, Lord. They believe us in us, Lord. He believes in us, woman, Lord, that we need to get together, Lord, that we need to lift your name up high, Lord, because we know, Lord, we are nothing without you, Lord. Kondura Masada. Bring your fire, Lord, into this place. And I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies, just praise and worship and dance and receive it. Don't hold nothing back. It's only latest. Let's just dance for the Lord. Let's just cry for the Lord. And let's just receive it today. Amen. Amen. We are going to have a great time. Look at those beautiful ladies ready to praise the Lord. They love the Lord. They look so ready to marry the Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our worship team. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there ain't no grave that can hold my body down. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there ain't no grave. Hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Hold my body down. You hear that trumpet sound? I'm gonna rise right off the ground. There ain't no grave. Hold my body down. Yeah. 
body down. Soon and very soon we're going to hear that trumpet sound. Ain't no material thing, ain't no job, ain't no mansion, ain't no money in the world, ain't no dirt in the ground that can pile me up with, that can hold me down. Because when that trumpet sounds, the Bible says that if I, if I happen to be asleep, that he'll wake me up and I'm going to jump right out of sleep and I'm going to be with him in the clouds, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready to go now. I don't want to wait until I end up sleeping. I want to be there as soon as I can get there, amen. But until then, we got to preach the gospel. We got to tell the world who Jesus is, amen. Because every praise is to our God, amen. Every praise is to our God.
take you in his arms and make you home. And as you give your life to him, he'll set you free. And you will live and reign with him eternally. Sing Praise the Lord. So good so far. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's anyone here today for the first time visiting to the Anchor to the Cross. Anyone the first time visitor? Raise your hand. So we have a little basket, a little gift for you guys. If you raise your hands, you get a little gift. No? Oh, there's one right there. Well, praise the Lord. How about second time visitor? Is there anyone second time? 
All right. Well, she gets one too. Amen. Praise the Lord. So are you guys excited for some more? Amen. We have good things planned for you guys. I would like to bring Cher Carnell just to say hi to you guys. Don't get too excited, okay? Because she's not preaching right now. So can you come up here and just say hi so they get more excited? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, I am so thankful that I am married to Christ. So thankful that we are married to Christ. Above, uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm married to Bob Cornell. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and he's not even here, uh, but I can, I'll brag on him wherever I am. So I'm, I'm thankful that I'm married to him. And if you're married this morning, I know you're grateful for the spouse that God's given to you. But there's nothing like being joined together with Jesus Christ. Nothing like being joined together. He's the one who gives us peace. He's the one who gives us joy. He gives us the strength to wake up in the morning. You're here and I'm here because he lives. Hallelujah. He lives. And uh, I know I'm not supposed to be ministering just yet. So uh, I'm going to hush. But you're dead and I'm dead. But he's alive. Right. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is alive. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And I'm going to give it to you now or I'm going to start. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So we got to hold. We got to wait until about 1.30, you guys. So hold on to your excitement. Um, I'm going to call a sister up here. Um, she's one of our secretary of the church. And uh, she's a great woman of God. She has two beautiful children and a husband. So I would like to welcome uh, Valerie over here. She's going to give us some word and some reputation for the church. Amen? Okay. But there's one more thing I wanted to get her when she get up here. It's her happy birthday today. <laughs> She is here praising the Lord on her birthday. There's nothing greater than that. Amen. And she's only 21. Doesn't she look hot? <laughs> so can we all say happy birthday to Valerie, please? Happy birthday. And I know somebody's going to turn 16 in three days. Can I say her name? <laughs> no. <laughs> what's, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, Sydney. Sorry, Sydney. I brain freeze right there. Sydney, would you stand up, please? And that's Sharon's daughter. Look how beautiful and gorgeous she is. I think she came ready to worship because she's wearing white. So that is a sign right there. You want to come and worship with us? Nah. All right. Well, happy birthday to you too, okay? Good morning, everybody. You know, there's no place that I'd rather spend my birthday um, than here in the house of God and Oops, praising and worshiping alongside a bunch of beautiful women who love the Lord, who love Jesus, and um, it's going to be a great day. I know that it's going to be great. Sister Sharon is here all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I know we're going to be blessed. So this morning, um, I'm going to be calling up a few sisters to share a little something with you. But before I do that, I want to give you just a brief overview of our church history. I know many of you are from the church, so you know how we started and how it all has transpired. But there are some visitors, so I just want to give you just a quick look as to how Anchor to the Cross came to be and, and kind of where we're going and, and the vision that we have. So um, if you all, you all probably know that Anchor to the Cross Ministries is affiliated with Jimmy Swigert Ministries out of uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We preach and attempt to teach the best of our abilities the message of the cross. You know, some might argue that the message of the cross is a man-made word or uh, doctrine that comes from man. Some say we're just followers of Brother Swagger, but the truth is that we are all followers of Jesus Christ, just as Brother Swagger is. And the message of the cross is, to me, and maybe to some of you, it's the most amazing, Holy Spirit-filled, most simple truth there is around. Amen? It's just the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, Pastor Charlie says sometimes that when he first heard the message of the cross and he, it started, you know, being revealed to him and he had an understanding, it was like being born again, again. And I don't know if any of you guys have that, that experience. So maybe you got saved years ago and then when you started hearing the word from, you know, coming from the Swaggart Ministries, it's like your eyes are opened to something different that was there all along, but we just didn't see it. And so... 
in, I believe it was in 2005, um, Pastor Matt Paris, who's pastor of In Christ Ministries, his wife Vanessa is back there, and you'll see her kind of taking pictures here and there. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> They, are, uh, they started listening to SBN on the radio, 90.9 out here in the desert, about 2004 or 5, right around there. In 2008, uh, Brother Danny Guevara, he's not here, but his mom and his sister are here. Um, they started listening to the message of the cross. Now, everybody was at different churches at this time. And then something happened. I believe uh, Brother Swagger, um, it was Gabe, he came to the Coachella Valley and he preached. And Danny went to see him. And that was kind of, he says, like it was just open to him. And, and he was baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking with other tongues. And it just opened a whole new kind of a view of the, the word to him. Then in 2009 and 10, I believe, Pastor Charlie and Donnie started kind of listening in and, and understanding the word. And, and the Lord started doing something. He started to kind of move people in this valley. Uh, in 2010, my husband and myself had a rough year. We had been apart from the Lord for many years. That year we had um, several family deaths. Just kind of, it just happened one right after the other. And we knew that the Lord was drawing us back. We felt it, but we were just so frozen in our state of being away from God that we didn't know how to proceed. Well, little did, we, did I know, and now maybe looking back, we can see how God was kind of lining everybody up and, and moving them out of churches where they didn't belong and, and bringing them back to Him. And it's beautiful to think that how all of these brothers and sisters here who serve at Anchor to the Cross, they have a testimony of how they first heard the message of the cross, how they first found SBN, and kind of how it all intersected. And God just kind of brought it all together and, and just he, it just worked out. And so, Pastor Charlie's calling and his desire to evangelize and take the gospel to the hurt and dying world propelled him to leave the church he was at. Uh, they began a, we actually began just doing outreach ministry where we would take the church, all this set up, and we'd take chairs and go out to apartment buildings and have church out there. And then, um, that's, that was our first desire. And then what happened is we started, doors started being shut. Apartment buildings wouldn't allow us to come in anymore because they didn't want our religion to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Offend, offend anybody else's religion. So a lot of doors were closed for us to go out. But then Pastor Matt came around 2013 or 14. And those little cameras that you see around here, they're live streaming videos. And they go all over the world. We have people in China that watch. We have people from, I mean, all these different countries that are watching this small little church and and sometimes I wonder Lord that's so funny to me because we're just the you know a bunch of normal people but we preach the message that God has sent for the entirety of the world a, a message of hope for those people who are out there who just feel hopeless for those who were like I was and feel frozen and and hurt by religion and didn't know how to take a first step to come back to the message of the cross or to the Lord God opened those doors for us. So now we've got TV cameras that are going all over the country and all over the world. And then we have doors opened up at other homes that want us to come in different cities. I mean, we have friends from San Diego that are here, friends from Corona that have opened their home to us to go out and have Bible study because they don't have a mess uh, church there that is preaching the truth. And so we go and we take church to them. And that still is our outreach ministry. And so... I know that God is not done with us yet. We're just um, a bunch of normal people who love an awesome God. And we're not the perfect church, but we serve the perfect God. And every single one of us who's here, I can say, loves the Lord with all of their heart. And everything we do is unto Him and because of Him and because of what He's done in our lives and how He's changed our life. So that's where we're at now. We've We've come a long way from where we started meeting first, just meetings for outreach in Pastor Margie and Pastor Charlie's living room. And then we started having Sunday morning service there. And we just used to sit on their couches, you know, because that's what we had. And then we had more people come, so we had to buy chairs. And then poor Pastor Margie had to sell her living room furniture because we didn't have room anymore. I mean, it's the transition that we've seen and in the short period of time that we've been an established church 
is just amazing. And I know that it's only because of God. Only God could have done that. Only God has had his hand upon this ministry and is kind of guiding us and, and just saying, not there, here, not there, here. He's, he's doing that. And I'm so thankful for pastors who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, who want to be led by the Holy Spirit and not do of themselves and for themselves. This church, like I said, everyone from the pastor on over, we love the Lord. And so we're so thankful that you're here with us. If you don't have a home church and you're just visiting, if you're not from here, tune in with us on live stream or come and visit whenever you can. We'd love to have you guys here. And we're just so thankful to, to be here today. Amen. This morning I'm going to ask um, a couple of ladies to come up and share with you just a little bit. I know that they've got, well, first of all, let me back it up a little bit. I'm going to introduce um, our sister Candy. Come on, Candy. Come on up here. I know she doesn't like to be up here talking and everything, but she is um, Candy Amador. She's our associate pastor's wife, uh, Donnie, and she's going to introduce you and say hi. God bless you, ladies. I'm so blessed to be here this morning, but more blessed to have you all with us today. Um, I'm Candy, Donnie's wife, which is our co-pastor here at the church, and my in-laws are the pastors, Charlie and Margie. Um, so on behalf of us here at Anchor to the Cross, we welcome you. And um, I'm sad. It's not the same without my mother-in-law, Sister Margie. She's homesick. Um, but she's watching live stream, so let's be in prayer for her today that she gets well. Um, I know the Lord's with her right there where she's at. So we love you, Margie, and we miss you. Um, so I thank God for what he is doing in our lives. Um, I met Donnie when I was young. <laughs> I was a little girl. But we've been married for going on 13 years now. I got married right when I was 18. Um, a lot of people said we were too young, but the Lord had a plan, amen? And um, I believe that it's because of the Lord that our marriage is made strong, and it continues to remain strong. I know we all have our struggles, but um, as long as we keep God in the center of our lives, He's going to um, continue to make our marriage work, amen? Amen. So I, uh, we have two beautiful kids. We have a daughter named Leandra, she's 10, and a son, DJ, he's six years old. And they're a handful, but they're a blessing. Amen. Um, the Lord bless us with two children. But um, um, we've been serving the Lord. We started serving the Lord shortly after we got married, and um, we started going to church. So I wasn't raised in church. Um, I was raised Catholic, but not Catholic, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just say you're Catholic, but um, that's that was our what our religion was. But um, I remember when I was um, in elementary school, my brother was in high school, and he started hanging around with friends that would go to a youth group. So um, they invited him to a youth group, which was a Christian um, church. So he invited, he took me and my older sister along, and I remember that. You know, it was good. Uh, it was different. It wasn't nothing, you know, like a Catholic church. So shortly after that, when I started going to high school, I met a friend that introduced me, to, uh, took me to church, to a Christian church out in um, Imperial Valley, and I got to meet the Lord there, amen. So that was a blessing. But then we moved out here a little shortly after, and then that, I backtracked, sorry. And then that's when I met Donnie. But um, I thank God for meeting Donnie because even though he wasn't serving the Lord at the time, um, I really believe God was already, had planted a seed back when I was a teenager, amen. So um, encourage your kids to go to church and to youth group and bring their friends because they might plant that seed to other children, amen. So I thank the Lord for that. And um, I get nervous being up here, sorry. Uh, but... Um, shortly after that, um, I realized Donnie was a uh, pastor's son. <laughs> so I was like, what? So I was so nervous to meet Charlie and Margie. I remember he said, I want to take you to church on one of our first dates. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, you know, on a Sunday morning. And uh, right, Charlie and Margie were surprised. Um, he had never brought a girl around. 
so right when they seen him walk into church with me, they said, let's go to lunch after church. So uh, they sat me down and talked to me, and they told me where they stood and what they believed. So I thank God that the Lord placed them in my life since I wasn't raised a Christian child, that um, they've been an example to my life. They love the Lord. Their faith is in Jesus, and they've been a great example to me. And um, I know to my children as well, they're a blessing. So I thank God for that. Amen. So we've, uh, we started going to church right after we got married and serving the Lord. And shortly after that, got baptized. And it's been, it's been wonderful knowing the Lord. And um, getting to know the message of the cross has been a change in my life. And I'm praying, even though my family's not saved, that the Lord's going to save them as well. Amen. And um, this past year, you know, it's been the hardest um, ever in my life. But I know that God sees us through no matter the situation. So no matter the situation you're going through, we're all going to have our ups and downs. But as long as we keep seeking the Lord and having our faith set in Jesus, he's going to see us through every step of the way. Amen. And that's with your marriages, with your life, with any situation. So I want to share a scripture really quick. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. Um, In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Amen. So um, that, you know... um, I won't go into details, but I know that I've gone in. I met the Lord just in time, amen, for such a time as this. So I could remain strong in Him through every trial, through every situation. He has kept me, and I know if I continue to seek Him and put Him first, He'll continue to see me through, and He'll see you through as well, amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Rosie Moreno to come up. Where's Rosie? She's going to share a little something. Also. God bless you. I'm glad to see everybody here. I am so blessed to have my oldest sister here. She's beautiful like me. No. <laughs> um, um, I'm blessed to see her here. And everybody else, you all look beautiful. Um, I want to thank the Lord for my salvation. Um, I was raised in church. Um, so my mom taught us of the Lord. Um, but since 99, I've been learning more about the Lord, which is awesome. Um, in 90, I... I was raised at church, but I gave my life, my life, to the Lord, and really gave my life to the Lord in 99, because sometimes we go to church because we're raised in church, but do we give our life to the Lord? It's a little habit. They take us, we go, because it'll take us from the year, how but in 99, I felt... Um, my heart was just empty, empty, and um, I just, I was at a church, and that pastor didn't even know me, and he came up to me and said, you have so much hurt in your heart, I'm like, but you want to give it up today, I'm like, this pastor don't know me, how does he know I feel that way, but it was God. So I did. I fell on my knees and I cried out to the Lord. And I says, Lord, you're going to heal me. You're going to heal me today. And I won't get up until you do. I had questions. My husband had passed away in 99. I had questions to the Lord of why. But the Lord taught me. That only he knows why. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm not going to question you anymore because you know it all. I thank the Lord 
First of all, that I, my mom raised us in church, so we did know of the Lord. So it was a lot easier for me to turn to the Lord and be able to to ask Him, to cry out to Him, to just praise Him. But there's trials, and I'm not saying it's easy to serve the Lord. It's very hard. But we, because we serve an awesome God, He gets us through all of that. So it makes it a lot easier. When you feel down, because I go through a lot of trials too, I get on my knees and I tell Satan, I have the Lord in me, and you have no part in my home, my life, my heart, and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we got to do it constantly. Because he'll try. He'll try to come back. And, you know, try to destroy us, discourage us, you know, and all that. But we serve an awesome God. I serve an awesome God. And I'm sure you all serve an awesome God because you're here. Because you want to receive of God, more of God. You want to learn more of God. That's the reason you're here. You're not here because I invited you, because so-and-so invited you. No, you're here because the Lord wanted you here. So I praise the Lord. I come to anchor to the cross, and I'm blessed to have the pastors I have, even though they're very ill at home. And I pray the Lord touches them there. But um, I, I'm, I'm just, I just rejoice. I rejoice in the Lord. Always. And I always rejoice. <laughs> I'm going to ask one more sister to come up. Um, sister Rose. She's one of the elders here. And if you had a couple hours to spend with her, you would see that God is awesome. And her testimony is just amazing. And we're blessed to have her because Rose is in everything. If we have a fundraiser, Rose is there. If we need to clean, Rose is there. If we have an activity, Rose is there. She's out at the yard sales at 5 o'clock in the morning. And she's just a, a couple years older than me. But, you know, she, she has a lot of energy for the Lord. And so we're so thankful to have her. She said a couple of years. is, is I'm 30 years older than her. <laughs> um, my name is Rose. And uh, I received the Lord, uh, was, I was, my son was two at the time. He's 43 now. That's how long he's been. The Lord has been my God. My God. I've had problems like everybody else has. You go through trials and tribulations, but you learn from that just like me. God has been always, has always been there. When my husband died, he was there. When my son got married, he was there. And you say to yourself, well, so he's married. But when you only have one son and you live alone, that is something else. I tell the uh, ladies, for one year, I went into his room. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, because I knew that after he got married, it would be different. We were very close, but it would be different, and it was. And that's the way it should be. Ladies, if you have sons and daughters, it's not going to be the same. It's not. Okay? Don't get into your minds that, well, he'll be closer, she'll be closer. No. Because they are making their life. You are not... Included in that one life that they have. But anyway, like I said, God is with me. He's always been with me. But I want to share something. I was watching TV about two, three months ago. And I saw this, this man re retiring from sports. And he, he said three things that really affected me. So I'm going to share them with you. One of them is... When you're young and you have your whole life ahead of you and you think, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and blah, blah, blah. 
before you know it, it's gone. Your youth is gone because that's the way it should be. Okay? So you move on in your life. You, you get married. You have children. You have lots of memories. Lots and lots of memories in that, in that house or wherever you are. You have lots of memories. And you think about them and, oh, it's, it's so great to have memories because you can lay down in bed and you think of the memories. Each room that you go into your house, there's memories. But do you know that memories fade as you get older? Ladies, the ones that are older, like me, memories fade. And then there's another one. Number three. This, this man that retired, he, he said it wrong, but I corrected him. <laughs> he said, family is forever. He's wrong. You know who is forever? God is forever. God is with you. The minute you are born, even before you're born, he's there. He's making you up. He made me up. This girl is going to have lots of hair. Yes, I do. She's going to be kind of short. One thing about me is that I don't really gain too much weight. I'm, I can eat, 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 eat. I'm, yeah. But God is forever. He's, he's your right arm and your left arm. He's your head. He's, he's your memory. He's your youth. He is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you get in your car, he's there. You go home, he's there. When you're dreaming, he's there. He puts dreams in you, and he might take out dreams, but he's there. Don't forget that, ladies, as you young ones that are going through, about to get married and so forth. If you go through something, remember that. You call on him. I find... You know how the, the uh, Bible says prayer without ceasing? I find that if I'm driving and I have cars in back of me and so forth, I say, God, help me. Help me go through this without being into an accident of some sort. You don't have to kneel down and pray, pray, pray. You, you do that, but you can call on him any time of the day, any night of the day. You can call on him. And he will answer you. He'll answer you. Thank you. You know, Sister Ellie asked me if I would share a few words also. And um, so it's, an, it's a little uh, nerve-wracking to be up here to share the gospel and, you know, preach and all that. And... Um, Especially with Sister Sharon here. No pressure, you know. <laughs> Just kidding, Sister. <laughs> but as I, I prayed and I sought the Lord and, you know, trying to incorporate the title of um, the Brides of Christ, there's a, a scripture that popped out to me that um, the Lord said, that's it. And then it was interesting because on Wednesday night, Brother Mark came up here and he started preaching from the same scripture. And I'm like, oh no, he took my scripture. What? And so I started praying and I said, Lord, if it's of you, he won't touch on it the way I, you've placed it in my heart. And so I'm sitting back there and I'm praying and I'm praying and then the Lord just kind of said, you see, two people can see the same scripture, but it means something completely different to them. And it was so interesting that he showed that to me right then and there. And I'm so thankful for the Lord and for his guidance. And I, I won't take too long because I know it's it's... And it's hot up here with these lights and the singers are just sitting here. So just a couple minutes, if you don't mind, just um, bow your head right where you are and just pray for me and with me if you don't mind. Lord, we come before you right now and this morning, Lord, and I ask that you would just bring your word, Father God, that you would move me aside and let your Holy Spirit just flow. Lord, there's something that we need to hear this morning, Father God. There's something that you've placed in our hearts there's a need that needs to be met, and I know that you'll do it, Father. I ask that you just give me the words to speak, Father. And in the name of Jesus, we'll give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen and amen. 
So the scripture that I want to um, share with you, and if you have your Bibles, you want, might want to turn there. If not, you just write it down and check it out later. It's in Matthew. It's it, Matthew chapter 25, and we'll start in verse 1. <clears throat> and it's interesting because, you know, the Lord is with us all the time, and, and He guides us, and uh, He reminds us, and His Holy Spirit will always gently tug at you, push you, nudge you, just to remind you, hey, I'm here. You don't have to do this on your own. But we are stubborn sometimes. And when I say we, I'm not just talking about women. I'm talking about people in general, humans, beings. We are, are, are stubborn at times, and uh, we want to do things our way and say things our way. But the Lord has, the Holy Spirit has a way of just ministering to us and, and giving us what it is that we need right at the right moment. And so I'm going to start reading here, and it's the parable of the ten virgins, which I'm sure that we've all heard at one point or another. So I'm just going to show you, kind of explain and share my heart with you as to how the Lord showed me this. And it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And this is talking here, the bridegroom that they're referring to here is, is Jesus, and when he's going to come back for his church. And it's, to me, I felt like the Lord said this, Get ready and stay ready. Because, you see, what, what it, how it explains it here is there, there was ten virgins. And when it refers to them as virgins, it represents those who have accepted the Lord. Though they've been cleansed, we come to Christ and we've been cleansed of all our sin. He, he takes us through a process of renewal. We're made clean again in Christ. So all ten of them, actually, belong to the Lord. They all did. But then it goes on to say, there were five foolish, and there were five wise. Now the lamps that they're carrying here represents the light of Christ in us. <clears throat> the lamp, the light, was powered by oil, which is a representative of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So all ten virgins, all ten had lamps, but five of them didn't prepare properly. They were foolish. And even though they knew the Lord... They kind of just were lackadaisical in their, their uh, relationship with God. They didn't bring the oil with them. They, they didn't have a constant flow of the Holy Spirit in their life. Have you ever, maybe it's just me, have you ever felt like run down and wore out? And maybe your faith has been tested a little bit and you just feel like I can't I can't even go to church tonight because I'm so exhausted I, I there's an illness in me that I can't get up and go and and I just I just don't want to go I've been through that recently in the last few months with some things in my own health were just kind of pulling me down and and really weighing heavy on me and there were days when I would say I don't even want to go to church because I just don't feel good I just don't feel like that and then the Holy Spirit, the oil in my lamp, it was, it was like it was overflowing and saying, no, you come and be in my presence. The Holy Spirit said, no, don't sit there and 
whine and complain that you're sick, that I'm putting you through a trial, that I'm allowing this in your life right now to test your faith. Don't let that stop you. You get up and you go into the house of the Lord and you worship me. And that's hard. That's a hard thing to do sometimes, right? It's hard to just put self aside and say, my spirit longs to be in the presence of God, but my flesh is so weak. And my heart is naturally wicked. So we almost lean to that side. If we're not careful and we're not constantly refilling our lamps with His oil, then we're going to succumb to those pressures and the, the stress and the illness. And it will be easier for us to say, no, I'm not going. The further we get away from the Lord, the lower the oil goes in our lamps, the less light it's going to make. If we, you know, it says here, mentions that they got up and they trimmed their lamps. So when, if you have a lamp and it's powered by the oil, you know, the oil works to turn it on to make the fire. You've got to trim the wick, you know, the little wick that comes out. Because when you burn it, it turns black, right? So you've got to trim it and then get ready again. You've got to refill the oil, get ready again. You can't just live on that same oil. You know, I met the Lord in 1999. And there was a lot of things that happened. Religiosity kind of really hurt me. And, and I stayed away for a long time. My oil was out. I mean, out. I still knew the Lord, and I kind of wanted to come back, but my oil was completely out. And it's almost like that was it. I felt like that's it. Like, the Lord probably doesn't even know me anymore. That was my mindset back then. But when we started coming back, and we started hearing the message of the cross, and it's newness, and it was like a blindfold was taken off, and, and the Lord just said, I love you, no matter what. I went to the cross for you, and I'll go again. And for, for people, for some of us who, who have been apart and are so dry in our spiritual life, that means the world to, to just know that the God of all creation, the God that created everything in this universe, loved you enough to create you. He loved me enough to, to create me. I mean, sometimes I think, God, we don't know how detailed the Lord was when he put us together. I mean, have you ever seen a scan of a, a like an x-ray of a body and there's all these bones and there's tiny bones and there's big bones. There's all these organs that work together. God orchestrated that in each one of us, in every single one of us, because he loves us. And God says... Get ready and stay ready. So what does that mean? It means that when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm stressed, when there's a, an issue going on, I will continue to seek the Lord. I will continue to strive to be filled with oil when I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm running out. When I feel like, like I'm not ready, I, I better get ready. And it's, it's so interesting because then it says... That the foolish came to the wise ones and they're like, hey, give us some of your oil. What? Get your own oil. That's basically what they're saying. Because this, each one of us, each one of them has their own light of Christ. They carry their own lamp in us. My relationship with God is very personal. Your relationship with God is very personal. Our, our invitation to the marriage supper with Christ when he comes and he and he takes us back is is for me and yours is for you and yours is for you so my children they can't hide underneath my skirt and just come with me they've got to be saved they've got to be filled they've got to know that they need to be filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit and get ready and stay ready and just as some of us we cannot ride on the coattails of the elders in the church we cannot ride on the coattails of our pastors. Our pastors have great faith. I mean, great faith. And sometimes it's like, what? That's, that's, that's a gift. But you and I cannot ride on their coattails when it comes to salvation. It's very personal here. And it's very personal with you. And so God is saying, get ready, because you don't know when I'm sending my son to get you. But not just that. Stay ready. Stay plugged in. 
Stay plugged in. If there's one thing that I would say to anybody who's here, who's maybe gotten away from the Lord a little bit, and maybe you feel like your lamp has kind of run down and you're running low, or maybe you're watching on live stream and, and you've been away from the Lord, or you just feel like your spiritual life is lacking a little bit somewhere, I would say get ready and stay ready. Get close to the Lord. Get close to God because He's the one that's going to get you to heaven. Your relationship with Him is what matters. You know, you can come here to church every day and still be broken and hurting and empty, but you won't budge. It's very, I know it's very hard. I know that it's so difficult sometimes to just raise your hand and maybe come to the altar, get on your face before the Lord and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I stayed away. I'm sorry that my faith is lacking. Lord, help my unbelief. God wants his relationship with you to be one-on-one, -on -one, to be very personal. Because that's, that's who he is. That's what he desires for us. And, and so I just want to give you this word of encouragement that if you're struggling, God is with you. He's not left you. So don't just, don't be one of the foolish. Don't fall into the gimmicks that are around because there are many gimmicks in the modern church these days. And the modern church is foolish, dare I say, because they have forgotten the, the true meaning of the cross and what it means. They're the ones that are going to be coming to you asking for oil. And you say, I got something better. You got to come meet the Lord again. Introduce them. Bring them in. Don't stay away from the Lord. Get ready and stay ready. Stay ready. That's what the Lord spoke to my heart. He, he said, be wise and stay ready. And you know, I, I think back to the last months in my life and what I have been going through. And I, I was struggling because it's, it's difficult sometimes. It's not always peaches and cream and rose bouquets. But the Lord knows that and he sees your heart. He desires a deeper connection with you. He wants you to have that constant refilling of His Holy Spirit in your lamp. He wants you to stay close and be ready. There's going to come a time when the door's going to shut. And I, I've said this to some of my family and my friends that repentance for salvation happens on this side of the grave. This side of the grave. When you're gone and the time has come or the Lord comes, if you're not ready, it's too late. And so this morning, I know God spoke into my heart and he said, stay ready. You don't know, you don't know when I'm coming. Ladies, I wanna thank you guys for giving me just a few minutes. Um, I believe we're gonna have a special this morning also. And we gotta get the sound guy back there to get that song ready. But I, I pray that you're all encouraged and I know that we've got a lot of more good stuff coming and then we're going to save the best for last. So Sister Sharon's going to be after our lunch break and it's going to be a great time. So I pray that you guys would stay and, and stick, stick around with us and be blessed. Amen. Um, Sister Ellie had asked me if I could sing this song, Pray For Me. I'm not a singer, but what I do, I do unto the Lord. Listen to these words. This is about what Sister was speaking about. You know, but God loves us and He is awesome and he, he will get us through everything and anything that we go through. So I just praise the Lord of our awesome God. Praise the Lord.
alfarero y yo el barroz. Modela mi vida. No me gustas, te voy a quebrantar Y en un vaso nuevo te voy a transformar Pero en el proceso te voy a asegurar Porque por el fuego No me gustas, te voy a quebrantar Y en un vaso nuevo te voy a transformar Pero en el proceso te voy a señorar Porque por el fuego When we're going through trials, he wants to smile. He wants us to praise him. Instead of crying and feeling sorry for ourselves, we need to praise him. And just thank him for the trial because that means he's going to change us, make us different, stronger in the Lord. So I, I love this song. God bless you. Amen. Glory. God always comes through for you, don't he? If we just keep our eyes and our faith in him, he will turn those things around for us. Amen. You guys can go ahead and stand. Do, do a couple more songs real quick.
may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Then I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight. Joy is soon to come, turn around, turn around, turn around. God said he will turn it around. Oh, God said he will turn it around. What the devil meant for evil, God will make it good. Turn around, turn around, turn around. God said Let's give them all the praise. God is in control. Let's give them all the praise. God is in control. Let's give them all the praise. God is in control. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Say, let's give them all the praise. God is in control. Let's give them all the praise. God is in control. Let's give them all the praise. Yeah, that's 
spirit moving And that's alright, that's alright, that's alright, that's alright right. I feel the love of Jesus And that's alright I feel the love of Jesus And that's alright I feel the love of Jesus And that's alright sickness and wipe away your sorrow when that Holy Spirit is moving amen that's why I just want to be where he is amen I just want to be where you are dwelling day in your presence I don't want to worship from afar Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. And I just want to be. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are. Yes, Lord. In your dwelling place forever, take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory in your presence, that's where I always want to be, and I just want to be, I 
just want to be with you. I want to be where you are. I'm dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory in your presence. just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Brother, I need to sing that song one more time. But I have to be obedient to the Lord. The Lord is saying, if there's any among you right now with pain, afflictions right now, come to the altar. Let God touch you right now. Let's receive this touch right now from the Lord because He has so much to give to you right now. So you are in certain pain or anything going through your mind right now that you need a touch from the Lord right now. Please come to the altar. You can kneel here. You can stand up. And we'll just pray with you. One of our ashes will pray with you. So let's worship one more time. The altar is open for anyone that wants a touch from the Lord right now. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. He's here. His presence is here. Hallelujah. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me through the fire and heal all my disease. And I trust. Trust in you, and I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. You're all. You walk with me through the fire and heal all my disease, and I trust in you, Lord. I trust.
Cause you hold my world in your hand And I believe You're my healer I believe You are all I need Jesus You're all I need
You're more than enough for me. And Jesus, you're all I need. I believe you're. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe he's your healer this morning. He's all that you ever need. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
With showers of mercy and grace He's falling on every face There is freedom And Jesus reigns in this place Jesus reigns in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's a sweet presence. Amen. We're going to take a few minutes and we're going to do our favorite part of any service. And we're going to take up a, an offering. And, um, you know, other places, as, as I'm speaking, you know, you can start getting your offering ready. But other places, they charge you for something like this. You have to pay a fee to come and be with your sisters in Christ and worship God and, and hear the word. And there are some speakers who charge a fee to come out to your church and speak. Sister Sharon has never charged a fee. She's never asked for anything. But everything that we pick up here today is going to go straight to her. We want to send her off with a, a generous, healthy love offering for taking her time to fly across the country to come out here and minister to our hearts. Amen. So as you're sitting there, you know, ask the Lord what he would have you to give today. Remember, it's all going to Sister Sharon. We're not going to keep any of it here. If you have a check, you can make it out to A to C. And in the memo field, just write Sister Sharon. And we'll make sure that we give her one check so she doesn't have to take 50 of them back with her. Amen. And so let's all stand, if you would. We're going to pray for this offering. And we're going to ask the Lord to bless it. Lord, we want to come before you right now, Father God, and we ask that you would bless this money that we're about to receive, Lord. Speak to our hearts as to what you would have us to give, Lord, and let these, this, these funds that we're about to receive, let them be a blessing to Sister Sharon and her family, Father God. Bless the giver as well, Lord. You know their heart and you know their situation. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Go ahead and come on up and deposit your offerings, and then go out and shake someone's hand. Amen. Every praise is to our God.